All right, here are your video goals. Uh, make sure you're answering these three questions on your notes. Okay, so the first emperor uh, is Augustus, sometimes known as Octavian or Augustus Caesar, not Julius Caesar. Julius Caesar was the dictator. He picked Augustus as his heir, but the first real emperor or imperator of the Roman Empire was Augustus. And Augustus set some pretty important uh, precedents that later emperors are going to follow. First of all, Augustus establishes a powerful standing army. He has 28 Roman legions. These are different units of the Roman army, and he assigns them around different parts of the empire. And their job is basically to expand the empire through aggressive wars and to ensure peace and stability within the empire. And they do an amazing job of both of these. Um, another thing that happens under Augustus is he, um, he begins investing in systems of trade and infrastructure. This is stuff like roads to help tie the uh, empire together and aqueducts. Aqueducts are important because they bring city or waters, water to the cities and allow cities to flourish. Um, and all of this helps the empire to grow and to uh, keep, keep together. Uh, in terms of expanding the empire, Augustus has uh, mixed results. He has great successes in Egypt and out east. He also tries to expand the empire north into the uh, misty forests of Germany, and he is defeated there, actually, by the German tribes. And Rome never expands into northern uh, Europe, Germany, that area. And that's going to come back later when the Germans actually invade Rome about 400 500 years later. Uh, one other thing that Augustus does is rather than just having his son take over as emperor when he died, Augustus picks his successor. He picks a great Roman general named Tiberius. And this might seem like a good idea, you know, one emperor picks the next guy and that way you keep getting good people on the throne, but actually this sets a dangerous precedent. Uh, because it's never really clear who's going to be the next emperor, which leads to all sorts of intrigues and assassinations and whatnot. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. Serious strengths. They were military masters. They were highly organized and practiced very advanced warfare techniques. Um, you can see the Roman soldiers there. That's their typical uniform, their big boxy shields and their spears, which they actually used to throw. Um, they also had advanced siege weapons, stuff like ballistas uh, and other kinds of catapults that they could use to actually take enemy cities. And so that was a pretty big deal. Uh, because the Roman military is so powerful, they're able to conquer lots of territory around them, and Rome expands to its largest size under the empire. Also under the empire, because the Roman army is so dominant, we get this phenomenon known as the Pax Romana, which means the Roman peace. So during the time of the Roman Empire, there is basically peace within the Roman Empire. Uh, there are no little tribes warring with each other. Everybody listens to Rome. Uh, and this is really important because it allows for the establishment of long distance trade and also trade within the empire and the growth of cities. Um, so you're starting to see the development of a sort of urban trading culture. And the investment that the investment in, ro in roads made by the Roman Empire helped with this development. Uh, one result of the Pax Romana that's really interesting is the development of long distance trade. So Europe, uh, you know, where Rome is centered, begins trading with all sorts of other societies. They're trading with Africa, but most importantly, they're trading with East Asia. And this trade that develops between the Roman Empire and East Asia is called the Silk Road, where Rome begins uh, exchanging its luxury products, like glass and wine, with the uh, East Asian cultures who are bringing over stuff like silk, um, which is the most important commodity. And another thing that helps make the Roman Empire strong is their practice of cultural toleration. Uh, so basically, as long as you're willing to recognize Rome and pay taxes and accept the emperor as your ruler, uh, the Roman Empire is going to be cool with your culture. Whatever god you worship, whatever um, sort of practices you have, that's okay. Um, and this is, this is important because it allows for the incorporation of new ideas into the Roman Empire. But it also allows for new groups to contribute to the empire. So after places are conquered, they can become part of Rome.
Um, so you can see that it um, expands all the way north up to England and expands all the way southeast into Mesopotamia. And so it's only, it only stays at this size for a little while. They actually lose some territory over in Mesopotamia. Um, but, uh, and it's actually split in half a little while later in the 300s, which we'll talk about. But for a while, the Roman Empire controls all of the Mediterranean and all of Western Europe and good chunks of the Middle East and Africa, and it is the major power in the western part of Eurasia. But there are some serious weaknesses of the Roman Empire. They have unstable leadership because the practice of picking the air leads to intrigues and assassinations. And you even end up getting some really crazy, like literally crazy people in charge. The Roman Emperor Caligula wanted to appoint his horse, one of his major advisors, and uh, the Emperor Nero, which you see there, was famous for uh, basically having sung and danced while Rome burned to the ground during a terrible fire. Uh, another problem was the huge cost of the empire. They had to pay to maintain roads and armies, and this was super expensive because their armies and their roads were so big and expensive. Um, also, these heavy taxes had the problem of weighing down the Roman population. M more and more, the people of Rome were oppressed as they had to support the growing cost of the empire. Uh, and last of all, there was growing inequality. Normal Roman citizens were getting poorer and poorer, partially because of these high taxes, while wealthier Roman citizens continued to get richer. And uh, this led to some interesting cultural changes where really sort of wasteful spectacles like blood sports, gladiatorial combat, um, animal <laughs> killing for fun, uh, became really widespread in Roman culture, and this was used to placate uh, the poorer masses. See you all tomorrow.